said the Almond Brothers on the back, Almond Brothers band, making George on the back. Hang on a minute. I, I got the amp from Howard Lee's, a guy named Ed Sealing sent me the amp, and we took it apart, and that's where the HXDA came from. Derek Trucks owns that amp now. Mm. In the case with the amp were the receipts for Dwayne Allman buying his guitars from Ed Selig and attached to the receipts were the Greyhound bus tickets that he had bought the guitar to get it to him. So they didn't have UPS, they didn't have Federal Express. <laughs> they bought it a Greyhound bus ticket and put it underneath and it got delivered to the Macon, Georgia uh, depot. Hmm. In the, the, his Les Pauls all came to him and that's how they transmitted guitars around on bus on, on Greyhound buses, and that's how it came. And I was holding the receipts. Cool, I'm like, oh yeah. my Did god, nobody knows. Yeah. It's okay. There's a lot of stories I've been told that nobody knows. I'll give you another one. Turns out all of Spinal Tap was from the Ted Nugent band. What? Nigel Tufnell. Nigel Tufnell was Ted Nugent. David St. Hubbins is Derek St. Holmes. That's right. The band that couldn't find the stage was the Ted Nugent band in the Agora Ballroom. And these guys are writing this stuff down as they're following the band around. The thing with the, the peanuts and the wrong colors and the food, yeah. that's all Steven Tyler. They were on tour with him. All that stuff all happened. So it's a conglomeration of the, the lowest dance. dance. That's, that's correct. So I'm in, I'm in, I'm in Germany. And the guy walks up to this German, this uh, English road, he goes, Derek St. Holmes, he goes, David St. Hubbins. <laughs> I mean, I'll put Derek on the front right now. He'll tell you the whole story. Like, yeah, I, I mean, real. that was the Ted Nugent. Nigel Tuffle is Ted Nugent spelled backwards, basically. <laughs> yeah, that's what you're saying. Okay, so there, uh, here's another one. Richie Blackmore just got interviewed for what, where did... Uh, um, uh, smoke on the water come from. It's his foot. It's Beethoven's fifth backwards. Oh, it's, it's almost M like it's almost G. like I, I, I love to know that, but I kind of wish I didn't know. No. That. <laughs> <laughs> you know what Ziggy yeah. Top stands for? What? Zigzag and Top Rolling. No, I do. I do. I did know. That. Oh no! All these bands' name that. came from. You'll think. Oh, like Steely Dan? Don't lie, you don't want to know that. Steely Dan. You don't want to go look it up. <laughs> 10 cc's, go look yeah, it yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Love the spoonfuls. Yeah, oh, I, cool. I, I, got, I got in his face about that. I got in his I said, you got away with murder. Mm -hmm. and, and you know what he said to me? He says, yeah, I did. <laughs> it was the loving spoonful on camera suit for record. <laughs> John Sebastian, I said, I was right in his face. I said, John, you've got to go with murder. He goes, I did. He says, that's not where it came from. And then he told me the real story where it came from. It was an old blues tune. Where they were talking about the loving school. That's a long story. These bands' name came. Her record, Cheap Thrills, Janis Joplin's record, Three Shows, was Sex, Drugs, and Cheap Thrills. And they made them take the sex and drugs part off. <laughs> These bands' names came from real things. Yeah. Do you, do you, do you embrace it? What's that? Do I embrace it? Yeah. It was so irreverent. It was so irreverent. It was, it was like, you know, to society, you know. I, I'm sorry, it's the same thing like Lady Gaga did when she wore the meat dress. It was so irreverent. Yeah. And then, I mean, look, you can say whatever you want about this woman, but when she went at it with Elton John, and he ran those, those rehearsals at uh, the Grammys with an iron fist for three days, with the two of them going out with the grand pianos, they're all covered in dirt. When she finally got on the stage, she went at it and tore him up. When, uh, here's another example of something that was really cool. When uh, James Brown died, they gave the nod to a woman and let Christine Aguilera come up yeah. out of the floor singing It's a Man's World, and she tore yeah. it. To shred. Have you guys seen her play with Herbie Hancock? The that there's like a jazz record that Herbie Hancock that's like got like John Mayer singing a different vocalist yeah. every song. Aguilera did the uh, she did it live, and I was you kind of can't she can't deny her like teen star and all this. Yes, but no, that, there's a set of pipes in that lady that's just oh, like yeah. oh my god. So I so I had the guitar that she used as a dress on the cover of Rolling Stone. Is it the purple one you're on? The the the, the, the crazy no, beard. it was a blue one. The blue one. Oh oh, the, and the I got Aguilera. Got it, yeah, yeah. I sent it back to her after she sang It's a Man's World and said you need to have 
this. I thought, and I never got a thank you, but it doesn't really matter. I sent it back to her because I just thought that was extraordinary. Yeah. And she may have peaked at that moment. We don't know. We'll have to look as time goes on. But some of these things are just irreverent. Some of the rock and roll is irreverent. I think one of the greatest moments in rock and roll, in my experience, was watching Steven Tyler sing on the Super Bowl. Because if you watch the film, at the end, he grabs, he puts his arm around Joe Perry's neck and he says into his ear, my ear monitors were off. I couldn't hear. He did the whole thing in tune, in time, in a stage. What year was this? What, eight years ago? Seven years ago? <clears throat> Without monitors. Holy. I'm sorry, that's professional. Yeah, well that's muscle memory at its finest. You gotta no, be, no, you gotta no, be that's just... a, that's a badass. Real yeah. pro, okay? I'm sorry. Yeah. I thought when uh, Prince played at the Super Bowl and he tore it to shreds. That's like the only time it's ever, the only, you know how Super Bowl shows are kind of, uh, Dude, I remember that Prince performance. Yeah, Prince got up there and just like a shout all over everybody. Just like, He me, came oh, out yeah. honored, honored his race by the way he dressed. Yeah. And then he started to play these tunes down and then pieces of it. It was all live. Nothing was on tape. And my God, he tore it down. Yeah. The other thing of all weird things was Sting played on the Super Bowl with was uh, it good? The, the woman from... Um, Gwen Stefani. Yeah, Gwen Stefani. Mm -hmm. I thought he tore it down. And I think that that kind of divides <coughs> bands, right? Are they going to do it live? Are they going to do it yeah. on tape? Are they oh, going to yeah. do it this way? Are they going to do it that way? Carlos Santana came out the other night. He says, and by the way, we're not playing to tape, and we're not playing to uh, uh, files. This is what we, we're playing for you. Yeah. The crowd roared. They yeah. roared. They knew exactly. They weren't playing the files. It was extraordinary. Yeah, people are people kind of, I think, even I, I'm kind of surprised because I teach a lot of like, uh, like rock camps and things like that, so you get a really good eye level, ground level idea of what kids are kind of cool with and what, you know, you always assume, oh, they're not going to like this. They won't understand. Like the rock and roll thing, you would assume, Oh, they're not going to like that very much. They're probably into like whatever you know, electronic music or whatever you know. It but, depends on but, the it, but it, but it turns, but it turns out that like you know, you 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 think that way. You're a band. You're kind of jaded. But then you talk to the kids and you find out, no, they they like they, the rock and roll thing. Is they they, they totally yeah, dig it. They, they really do. They dig it. I've yeah. seen some extraordinary things in my day. So let me give you a few examples. When John McLaughlin got off the stage with Paco D.O.C. and Al Daniel one night. He was sitting there in front of me this far, and he had a guitar, the prototype in 1985. I was trying to sell guitar. I was starting my company. Mm -hmm. And he played that white guitar in the original brochure, and I couldn't breathe. John McLaughlin was not good. He was like scary, frightening. Yeah, that was, was that, you think that was his peak? No, God, think, no, no. He's still playing really, really He's still well. crazy he's, good. He's really crazy good. Mm -hmm. No, but I'm telling you, I, a couple of times John has played, and you can't breathe when you're <coughs> Okay. Yeah. I saw Eddie Van Halen in his peak play. Whoa. Yeah, that's what I wish I could have seen. Was that just that? The year's debatable, but there's that one. What did you see him? What did you see him? I saw him. Cause man, man. All, all that stuff. Everything. You got to remember too when you right around jump. When you go to that's one him. of my favorite areas. I saw it. Yeah, but that band. Literally, you would walk in to the concert hall as a roadie, and the road crew would go, "Oh, we got a really good guitar player in the band." Even the road crew couldn't shut up about it. Wow. They were something. I mean, the crowd roared so loud that David Lee Ross stood in front of the crowd and just stood there with his jaw open for about a minute and a half. It was louder than the PA was possible to have, and all they were doing was screaming one note in appreciation. I, I mean, there have been some extraordinary moments. Uh, I saw Return to Forever get a standing ovation for each of the musicians for about a minute and a half each, and they hadn't played a note. Damn. They were opening up for Santana. Oh, wow. And Stanley Clark was standing in front of the crowd, at, at, and he was like this. And the place, I mean, at the time, there was no cell phones, so it was all mm -hmm. lighters, right? And the whole place is lit up like a Christmas tree. Everybody's got their feet on the floor. The whole building's shaking. We've got 20,000 people going nuts. And then he bowed, and it doubled in volume. Damn. I've <laughs> seen some things just, just like, huh? You gotta remember too, if you go to like, when you go to a NAMM show or you go meet, meet people that have been around or like, you know, kind of been at the beginning of something or the forefront of something, all these, 
everybody's saying like Van, they say Van Halen was awesome for a reason. So a lot of a lot of like younger kids were like, ah, I don't have Van. I'm like, no, you have to understand. Like it was it was serious back then. Like you got to you go to that show. And it was the volume. It was loud and awesome. No, the mix was perfect. It was well, it was perfect. perfect. Yeah, like the the I just saw them. They came to London, Ontario. And they played at a uh, they played in the field, right? Uh, the fairgrounds, and it was cool because I didn't get a chance to go. Is that God or what? That's yeah, answer it. It's Derek St. Holmes. <laughs> Hi, Derek. Are you okay? He said his name three times. Uh, I'm at a clinic talking about you. Say, everybody say, Hi, Derek. Hi, Hi Derek. Derek. <laughs> He's cracking up. Hey, <laughs> Derek, you're on speakerphone, so you be really careful, okay? <laughs> Ah, uh, we don't want to hear about this. <laughs> <laughs> so let me just ask you another yeah, question. I'll call you right back. Let me ask you one question on speakerphone, and I'll call you right back. Hold on a minute. Are you David St. Hubbins or not? I am David St. Hubbins. No! <laughs> Was Ted Nugent Nigel Tufnell? I don't know where. Where are you? <laughs> I'm at more music in Mikey in, in Indiana, and we're doing a clinic, and you've been the subject of the clinic. No, why are you apologizing? I just, I just wanted to call my best friend. He never calls me. Anymore. Oh! Intro. <laughs> oh, 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 man, I just got dumped in front of a whole room. <laughs> I love you to death. As soon as I'm done talking, I'll call you back, okay? All right, bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. I got it. <laughs> Some phone calls at clinics are mistakes. <laughs> Oh, dude, no. We're talking about the guy that sang Stranglehold. We're talking about the guy yeah, that sang Stranglehold. Yeah, that's the Stranglehold guy. By the way. He, can still sing, he still sings oh, yeah. very much like that, too. Yeah. You know? All right, so I'll tell you another true story. All phones turned off. All cameras turned off, okay? 